everyone. We warmly welcome you to the Skiller Live session on interview facing and resume writing, organized by Computer Science Student Association of University of California. I'm the moderator for today. My name is Devamani Takshila. So before starting the session, let me introduce the Computer Science Student Association of University of California. Computer Science Student Association is the pioneer subject association of the Faculty of Computing and Technology and one of the most dynamic student bodies in the University of California with the vision of to become a center of excellence in creation and dissemination of knowledge in, in computing and technology for sustainable development. Computer Science Student Association works always to maximize the potential of CS students and to reveal their hidden skills. We are always looking forward to improving the knowledge of CS community to keep update with the fast evolving technology. Next, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today. The guest speaker for today's session is Ms. Sweda Rajaratnam. Ms. Sweda Rajaratnam obtained a bachelor's degree in human resource management and personal administration from the University of Northampton, having a huge experience in technical recruiting and the people management, she gathered extensive knowledge in the IT industry. She has over five years of industrial experience, which include more than three years in the IT field of Sri Lanka. And currently, she is the heading the campus hiring pillar for Virtusa Sri Lanka. So let's move on to their session. If you have any questions or need any clarification, feel free to ask her using the link we share in the chat box. And those who have joined through YouTube Live, you can comment your questions. At the end of this question, Ms. Sweda will answer them for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Sweda Rajaratnam. So, Ms. Sweda, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Devamani, for the wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, I'm so sorry that I won't be able to come on video due to the power cut issue that currently we are facing. So a uh, uh, very warm welcome to all of you to, and special thanks to the CS department who invited me to do the session today. And I'm glad and I'm privileged to do this session. So I'll quickly move to the uh, slides. I'll share my slides. Hope you guys can share it. So uh, team, before starting the session, as I called you all team, uh, you guys can ask any questions at any point of the time if you want. And please feel free to talk through the session because this session is going to be an interactive session where there is no uh, moderator or audience. It's going to be always a discussion and if you can ask me any questions that you have and it has to be an interactive session from your end as well. So basically, I have put up a picture here. I hope everyone can see my screen. Devani, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am, you can see. Okay. Can any one of you tell me what do you understand out of this picture? Anything that you can tell me about this picture? I can't see the chat, but if anyone is answering through chat, Please, Demini or uh, someone from the team, uh, help me out. Any idea about the picture? Anything that you understand from this picture? What does it say? Any idea, team? Okay, basically, if you see the first picture, it's an interview, right? So the interview is happening between two foxes and the boss fox is actually, uh, you know, interviewing another fox and just marking all the things in the resume as well as in the personality. So when it comes to a cat resume, if you see all type of different, different, um, you know, characteristics and what other things that it is uh, cat does and everything is over there. 
So if you can see all four pictures of this, it actually depicts about how the interview goes and how a resume should reflect in animal's world. But today we are going to see how it will depict in a human world, where how we are going to see, how we are going to do it as like attractive way and a very truthful way. So welcome to CV writing and interview facing things. I would like to take, uh, I would like to welcome all of you. And I'm Sweda. I think Devini gave a big introduction about me. So I have over five years of industrial exposure as well as three years of IT exposure as well. And today I'm, I'm gonna share you a few thoughts, how to write, have a good CV, as well as how to face your interview, because this is gonna be very helpful for all of you since you're gonna start your career. So the first thing, what is a CV or what is the resume, right? A CV or a resume is a written document of your work experience, uh, educational background and your skill, right? It's very important. This paper is very, very important for you when you apply for a job. Not only when you apply for a job, it's very important when you want to do a master's or when you want to join a club when you want to lecture wherever you go you need this paper without this paper nowadays no one will recognize you who you are what is the purpose of this paper so the important purpose of this paper is this paper is a marketing tool opportunity to make a good first impression to all of the client or all of the uh, employer who is going to meet you for the first time. So currently everyone is doing everything in a virtual environment, right? We are not meeting anyone in person. So if it's virtual, even though if you don't see me, when you get the introduction about me, you, you tend to un uh, see who I am, right? To see me who I am, you need my CV. You need a paper document to see who is this person. And that is the way that you can brand and market yourself, right? So these are the three things that I want to start the session with. What, when, and what is the purpose? So I think all these three things are very, very important before you write a CV. Based on these things only, you can start writing a CV. The next thing, how important is your CV? Can anyone tell me how important is your CV? You don't have to answer in uh, English. You can tell me in Sinhala, even if you prefer Tamil, any language that you prefer, it's totally fine. If you can tell me how important is your CV? Anyone from the session? You don't have to read this. You can tell me how important you think your CV is for you. For me, it's very important because without my CV, I don't think so I'll be able to apply for any other job or any other position in the current market. Anyone else? Shall we shoot the question to Delmini or Anushka? Can anyone of you tell me how important is your CV? can see a pin drop silent. Is it important or not important? Can you all hear me? Yes, Miss Vela, we can hear. Okay. So basically, when you start a career, the major important thing that you want to see and you're going to, you know, when you're selecting your degree, uh, when you're going to select your university, after all these processes completed, once you start your first year, the important thing you have to do is you have to create your CV. You have to create your CV and keep it updated. Whenever there is a, like a new, like when you move to a second year, third year, fourth year, you have to keep it updated. Because CV is one of the important things that you have to keep it ready all the time. 
because that is the you know that is the first thing that's gonna make a first impression to your employer your university your co clubs and whatever the place that you're gonna apply to that is the first thing that's gonna impress there's always say they everyone is say, used to say there is always say that you know the first impression is the best impression cv also works like that whenever you present your cv that is going to be our first impression about who you are and whether we are going to hire you or whether we are going to you know reject you that everything comes and everything the beginning the starting point is going to be the cv so cv is very very important for you to open a door in your career path to open opportunity to give an opportunity to you you know cv is one of the major and important thing in your career so make sure that you have a proper cv as well as you have a like a good cv when you enter into your career now it's a start building a cv which will be very very important and which is very very needed in the current virtual scenario that we are facing so what is a resume so we know resume is a paper is a resume is only a paper no your resume is you make sure it represents you well right always remember whatever is going to be in that paper it's going to represent who you are what type of a person you are what type of a skills that you have what type of a background educational background you are coming from and what you are expecting in the from the industry all these things going to reflect in your resume so your resume is very 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 important because it's going to represent you a good cv will have three important points one is stand out from the crowd if you see there are so many people around the market nowadays you know every each and every quarter there are like 1000 to 1500 more than 1500 students are coming out right there are so many people but still what they do is they have to get employed they have to be different their skill set has to be different they have to stand out from the crowd you have to be unique if i put the word correctly you have to be unique to get picked to get identified So CV is one of the really, really critical area that you have to look into to make yourself very unique. The second thing, the CV is a place where you can showcase your employer to uh, draw attention to your skills, your experience, your achievements, your potential to show you to your employer, your university, wherever you go. When you have your profile updated. and people will be saying oh this is this person okay i know this person and this is the capacity this particular person has this is a skill set the particular person has all these things will come from particular cv that you're going to have create such an impression on that empl- employer that will not be you know you have to create a like impression on an employer because CV is a place where it will help you to show your employer your potential, your right skill, as well as you know, make sure that gives the best impression. Whenever someone sees your CV, they should think, okay, let let me call this person again. Let me check what is. Let's have a phone call interview. Okay, let's call in this person for a virtual interview or a, you know, in person interview. The second interview, third interview. the first starting point is going to be a cv so you are you are going to be reflected through your cv so make sure it represents really really well so i'm going to show you five important points that you should understand when it comes to cv i don't know whether you guys know about this five p's but these are the five p's of cv one is painless all right painless it should be easy to read and it should be well organized it has to be you know make sure it is like you know uh you know your words are like clear your resume is you know have some certain things has to be bold out and you should have like two to three levels only so it has to be well organized it shouldn't be clumsy it shouldn't be like 
uh, green color, black color, blue color, yellow color. This should have a proper form. Perfect. It should be always make sure that it has to be perfect, right? So whenever you're having a CV, always check your grammar, spelling mistakes, punctuations, and personal pronouns. Everything, please make sure that you check that. Have a consistency when it comes to your CV. Page. Uh, when it comes to page, most of the people have don't focus on much on this page where you don't think about the margin or the, you know, what you call the page sizes or smaller or bigger. Make sure you have a proper margin. Because when it comes to now when you're sending a CV, if it's not aligned properly, no one will, you know, put your CV to the next level. Make sure, always remember it represents you how organized you are. So make sure your pages of your CV also have a proper, uh, you know, margins as well as proper uh, alignment. Paper. Nowadays, uh, before that, we used to send our CVs through post, right? So nowadays, we are not sending it through post. We are using our virtual, uh, you know, platforms like email and, you know, what do you call it? You know, WhatsApp and, uh, you know, any other social media platform that you have to send your CV, even LinkedIn, through that we used to send the CV. Make sure you always send through PDF format. Always send through PDF format. Don't send the CV through Word or a photo or a JPEG format. So this is one of the standard process that we follow uh, you know, around the world. It's always make sure it is a PDF format. Position. Always mention what position you are applying for. Let's say you have no idea what position you're going to apply. Make sure you keep it blank. Whenever you're applying for a position, make sure you update it and send it to the particular employer. Right? So these are the five P's of C. These are the important things that you have to consider. I hope these are the things that you always miss to or uh, even like recognize, right? This is a small thing, but it makes big difference. So make sure you follow all these five P's, right? So now let's move into the structure of the CV. How can you structure your CV? The first thing, personal details. This is very important about what are about this is a section about you're going to tell who are you, right? What is, uh, you know, what's your name, what's your address, all those details can come here. Make sure this is aligned very properly. Name. Always make sure you have a font uh, from 20 to 22 and make it both. And you can use your first name and your last name or else you can, uh, you know, put your initials, but we always, uh, uh, you know, ask the people to update their calling name and the last surname, right? Because that is very important. If you put FNKP uh, I'm not sure out of this FKNP, which one is your name? Which any initial depicts your name? Or which initial you're referring to your name, right? So I have to call you, I don't know whether it's like, you know, he or she, unless and otherwise they mention the gender right? Or maybe unless and otherwise they put a picture. So make sure that you always mention your uh, calling name as well as your surname. That's very important. And use a proper font and use it, make it go. Right? When it comes to addresses, we always recommend you to give your permanent address. There is a reason behind it. Why we want a permanent address is because we wanted the people we wanted the team uh, to do a background verification. Currently, most of all the companies are doing background verification. To do a background verification, we need uh, your permanent address. That's very, very, very important. So make sure that you give your permanent address. Don't give any addresses like where you have Currently, you know, your uncle, if you are, let's say, if you're staying in your uncle place, don't give that address. Or if you're in a boarding place or a hostel, don't give those addresses. Always make sure that you give a permanent addresses. 
email or phone number. First, I'll come to email now. Email, right? When it comes to email, uh, you have to have a font saying, uh, you know, like you have to have the font size as 12. And you have to no need to write as email or phone, uh, you know, in front of it. Make sure you don't do that. As well as you can always have a professional email address. Where currently I used to see a lot of email addresses like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pinky Ranjan at yahoo.com. Uh, catch me if you can. Uh, Anita dot, uh, Anuka dot, Anita dot, uh, some, you know, fancy names. Don't use those things. It's not professional things. Always make sure that you have a professional email addresses. You can use your first name, surname, your birth of date, anything that you wish. But make sure it's very professional. So make sure that as a professional name out of it. Okay, that's very, very, very important when it comes to email number, email addresses. When it comes to um, your mobile numbers, always make sure that you give a mobile number where you are having a, a calling number as well as if we can't reach out to you through one number, make sure that we can reach you out through another number, another mail, uh, another calling number. That's really, really, really important. Okay, make sure that is there. So otherwise, it won't be. It will be really difficult for to reach you out for the employer or whoever who wants to reach you out. The second and third, like important thing, is LinkedIn. Currently, I think I would recommend all of you to have a LinkedIn profile because more than having a Facebook or Instagram profile, that's for the personal use, right? For the professional. Um, used to understand what is happening in the market what is happening in the current scenario you should really 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 need a linkedin profile update the linkedin profile keep your profile updated every day like every month just keep updated if you're done if you can have you can learn a lot of things through linkedin you can have a lot of you know skill sets you can do a lot of exams you can get a lot of certification make sure you are active in linkedin because then when you show when you put your linkedin profile into your cv uh, nowadays most of the employers check your linkedin profile they go and see how active you are how well you know uh, the current market what is happening in the market those things will be definitely definitely identifiable so make sure you have a LinkedIn profile. I think uh, the team will arrange a different session for you to have how to have a LinkedIn profile, how to maintain a LinkedIn profile as well. But make sure always have a LinkedIn profile and update it in your personal details. The next thing, personal objective. Personal objective, it's not a compulsory thing. But if it's there, it will be really good. So personal objective may uh, actually going to say, who are you? what you can offer the company and what are your career goals. These are the three things can be covered through your personal objective. For example, it's about a brief a statement that you're going to say about what your what is your position that you're going to apply for and what you're expecting from the company. And maybe your profile summary, it's about the strength, the experience, and it should be very brief, guys. It shouldn't be a, like a big paragraph. It should be very brief and something that tells who you are to the employer and what you can offer from your side to the employer from through your skill set. This is very, this is a very attractive place. You you can add it in your CV where you can have some, you know, two to three lines about who you are and what you can do. And what are you expecting from the industry? Like I say, it's an internship or a permanent position or maybe a research you want to do, anything. But make sure that it's very brief and like, let's say we can say short and sweet, right? It has to be short and sweet. The next thing is very, very important, right? Your work experiences or internships. So since you guys are first year students, uh, in two years of time, you guys will be you guys will have to have an internship, right? Once you are done with your internship, you guys will go to a permanent, uh, you guys will go to a permanent position. 
to go to that permanent position you have to have a internship uh, experience or a work experience that you have to update basically what i will be saying is when you are updating your working experience it has to be on a chronological order always start with most recent one and with a heading if you can see the example here let's say if you are a software engineer uh, put the title as software engineer put the company below and put your uh, you know responsibilities down and you can add your key achievement that you achieved in the particular company that's really really important at the same time one of the important thing that you have to consider is to put your uh, the working like the time period the time frame you should in uh, you know include for example if it's 2017 to 2018 and if it's currently you are still working in that organization you have to always mention present if you have previously worked in that organization you can put the dates it's very very important when it comes to your cv this is one of the important thing that we see and it's a one of the misconception most of the students does also some people doesn't put this whether they are currently working or not working also so because of that it will be very difficult when it comes to short listing process so make sure you had those you know you can you should focus on these little, little things which will make your cv into a perfect cv right as well as bold the organization name bold the uh, designation and bold the key achievement always use action word and always use present or past tense for the job right so these are the important things when it comes to work experience so this is very very important make sure this is very up, well updated and put all your key responsibilities don't just put uh, software engineer the company name only the year make sure you add your key responsibilities you had your you know key achievement if you have won any award in the particular company you can add that as well right the next thing going to be elugation and qualification this is one of the strongest pillar of all of us right you're going to show how strong we are in our academics right what is our what we are doing or what we have done and all those things going to come out of this so it's basically a summary or a summary of uh, what you have achieved and what are the skills and what are your interests and uh, make sure this is aligned properly so if you see the uh, pictures i think the pictures are not bit clear but basically uh, as a software engineer students you guys have to learn lot of technologies right from java wop uh, to you know you know like php to you know uh, you know object oriented concepts and all those things you have to learn right when you put your technological skill set don't just mention uh, you know java dot net php uh, you know what do you call you know cloud or aiml qa don't mention like that always have a bar always mention your skill set and you know rate your skill let's say if you are going to put 1 to 5 okay i'm really good at java so just put 5 or better you can have a bar and you can color it right you can color the bar and say okay you are really good at it. then the interviewer or the employer will know okay you are really good in this particular skill let's target on this skill and we'll ask from this particular skill if not the interviewer has the uh, you know freedom to ask from you from any area because you have given any uh, you have mentioned like i have uh, i know all the uh, particular technologies which is going to be a very difficult for you to face your interview let's say if you don't have a 100% understanding about particular skill so always make sure that you have a what do you call a mark on a bar or like you know stack rank your technological skill and you can put your educational qualification let's say if you're currently your didini are the projects that you're currently doing or else what that, what do i currently learn that you can mention when it comes to your school uh, secondary education you can put your o levels a levels 
or else if you have done you know london or elvis or london elvis you can mark that and you can put your score you you don't have to mention all the subjects let's say if you are a ordinary o level if you have done you can put uh, 8a 9 8a 1b or 9a uh, or 9a or maybe 6a 7b like that only mention that if you have a z score or maybe if you have a island rank or something like that you can specify that and you have to mention your uh, ordinary level and like or at advanced level you can mention your school name and which year you have done it and your results that's more than enough don't make your cv more clumsy and don't have too many information which uh, which makes you cv a bit dull bit. so make sure always have the uh, clear cut information about your academic if you have done any certification or if you have done any diplomas you can add that as well in your academic you know uh, qualification area the next thing is very very interesting area which i really really like to move into is this extracurricular activities achievements and publications so basically when you know about a person who you are and what you do is coming from your education as well as about your working experience right but to know about as a person what type of a person you are and what type of a characteristics that you have it's coming from your extracurricular activities for example i'll give you a good example uh, let's say if you have played cricket in your school if you played basketball in your school or else if you have played uh, you know a group sport that means you are a team player right you know how to head up a team and you know uh, you know let's say that doesn't mean that uh, the people who haven't done the sports doesn't know how to be a good team worker cannot be a good team worker but they will have an extra understanding how to ha handle a team how to work under leader how to balance each and every role in a team those things are very very uh, helpful through a sports not only sports you can do any aesthetic activities like associations if you are a vice president of an association if you are a secretary you know how to handle the programs and if you are a you know you know kind of like a if you are managing the cash flow and all those things will come those small small management qualities leadership qualities should come through the extracurricular activities so if you mention your highest achievement from your extracurricular activities or your from your what do you call um, these areas it will be really 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 helpful for you so make sure this is you know depicted in a really really good way and add your extracurricular activities add your aesthetic activities and make sure you see we you know that is the most interesting part all the recruiter like me and other people who would like to see in a cv to see how potential you are and because you know most of the current corporates and most of the companies you know even if you take big giants like mas or even like ales and any other companies even virtuosa we have lots of sports teams we have cricket team tennis uh, you know so many companies like you know so many uh, you know like aesthetic activities teams that we have it will be really helpful and it will be really really useful to see how good you are how did you manage both studies and your know, extracurricular activities it shows how balanced you are and achievements you can put if you have won any colors award if you have been won any state awards or divisional provisional any achievement that you made across from your career and you're going to get also you can add it in your cv and the another important thing is publication so currently i have uh, noticed most of the students from you know computer science department and from the other departments they started writing to release publications right they have started writing you know articles and you know linkedin publications if you have any interesting topic that you think that will uh, keep make you stand out from other cvs please do add the link most of the employers go through that i can assure that i can assure you because it shows how different you are right what about what type of a critical thinking what type of a thinking that you have in the market about the market so make sure you have that as well right so these are the important uh, things that i wanted you to uh, you know notice when it comes to cv the final and most important thing in a cv is going to be reference right references are really really important when it comes to references you should be having 
two qualified people uh, as your reference. Make sure uh, you should put your references uh, based on their request. You should ask them before you put them as a uh, request, uh, you know, reference. Uh, it doesn't have to be your, uh, your it, it shouldn't be your, you know, relatives or your family, or closest family members, blood relations. I think all of you know that. But at the same time, don't put, let's say, if someone of your, let's say, if your friend's uh, dad is a company CEO or a senior director or someone who knows, someone is like that, just don't put them because they know you. Just put a person who really, really knows about you. Maybe you can put your previous employer, like uh, your previous reporting manager, your lecturer, uh, lecturer that you closely work with, your supervisor, put people knows you and people who can recommend you. People know your potential, your caliber, please do mention their names in the you know, list, right? That's very, very, very important, right? And make sure you ask them before you put the reference and make sure that you give their uh, you know reachable mobile number email address their designation and the company as well or company or the university wherever they are belongs to and that's really really imp important don't ever mention uh, you know bottom of your cv that references available upon request don't ever put that because you know it's it's kind of like you know it's kind of like it's it's I don't think so I don't recommend that because it just you we can't call you and ask that we are gonna you know we're gonna refer from your about you so can you give your reference that means I'm giving you indication that okay I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna ask about you from a different person so make sure you tell that person that you are a good worker so don't ever do that make sure that you have two references updated in your CV that's really really important. So these are the uh, important things that I wanted to tell you and uh, guide you about the CV. Any questions up to now, team, before we uh, start the interview phasing, uh, you know, skills? Any questions? Any questions from the chat, Devmini, Anusha? No, ma'am, still not. Okay, so if there's any question, please do put it in the chat or please do ask from me. I can help you with it. So this is really, really important when it comes to a CV. These are the small points that we miss when we're doing a CV, but it's very, very important to uh, you know focus on these particular things. The next thing that I'm gonna talk about is how to phase an interview, right? Currently, we all are doing interviews and going to interviews through a virtual platform. So I'm gonna introduce four important points which will help you uh, to focus on your interviews more, right? The first important thing is choose the correct and stable infrastructure, right? Because very, very important because uh, sometimes this is kind of where that shows you how uh, prepared you are for the interview always have a clear background preferable would be like you know light colors or a white don't have a like a pinkish yellow kind of like background it's, if you don't have a background like that make sure that you have at least a currently we can change our background to even teams and zoom zoom account or whatever the platform google meet whatever the platform that we use right always make sure that you have either a plain background or just blur it that is very, very important. The place should be, uh, you know, noise proof. Have no interruption, right? Uh, let's say, you know, if you're in a room, make sure, you know, there is no TV noise or uh, sometimes when the interview is going, the fan noise will come like, kata, kata, kata. don't uh, make, don't have all those things. Before the interview, check that, that whether that is like, you can, do you have like a place where you can have a quiet place or, it's going to be noisy. The, all those things, product check around. It's going to be product easy and it's going to be really, really good when it comes to your interview. And we sure need to be bright. And lightning should uh, always uh, have, you know, in front of you or overhead of you. This is like a small technique, guys. Some people used to go and sit in a corner. 
because they think okay it's a noise there's no noise come there will be no noise metana metana mukut noise mukut inna enisa api metana indagam but don't do that i sit in a place where the light is in front of you maybe like a table light or maybe over you so that will give a lightning like a light a brighter background a brighter visual when you're facing a virtual interview always check the power supply currently even though we have we check the power supply it's going to be very uncertain right like, like you know even i was checking okay what time the power cuts will be happening but it's from 5 to 8 now so it happens so but make sure if you don't have enough power try to find a place where you can have your wifi set or your laptop charged all those things make sure you check that as well before the interview starts join the interview like you know 5 to 10 minutes early check your audio and video if your you know if the interviewer is asking you to turn on the video make sure that you are presentable and you have the audio and the video ready as well as make sure you have your stationery nearby you a pen a paper a notepad or let's say anything else like let's say if you are a more technological person have your notepad ready right if there's any question or if something you have to write or note it down don't run in the last moments just go and find out like you know have a paper or pen ready always be hydrated right like you know sometimes when you get nervous it can be visible through your video right so make sure you have a water be calm and have a water bottle or maybe a glass of water next to you whenever you feel a bit nervous you can have a sip of water and you can continue the interview these are the correct these are the things that you have to really really focus when it comes to a, a correct and stable infrastructure when it comes to next to you this is really really important when you are facing a interview so the next thing about the presentability how presentable you are right the audience so to the interviewer dress well be professional and preferably pale cloth guys so i think these points are very very uh, small thing uh, some people used to wear you know very red color pink a green a dark green or you know something like very unprofessional make sure that you have like a very a pale cloth color which is very recommendable and it is very professional as well look decent it's very uh, important and keep your mobile uh, silent but keep it nearby if there is any emergency that you have maybe even suddenly you can you will suddenly something happen and if you have to drop off and you have to call and inform the employer or the interviewer make sure your phone is next by next to you but keep it silent always have the eye contact towards the interviewer keep watching the screen throughout the session right always make sure you look at the interviewer and talk to them or uh, and throughout the session like don't look up for side or the wall or anything if your camera is on uh, in front of you look at the cam and look at the person and talk to them in person that gives you a good vibe and that builds the rapport as well as be relaxed and sit comfortably and don't be very nervous don't sit very saturated and all make sure that you sit comfortably relax and you can face the interview the next thing very very important after we all went through a pandemic and we were very tired of staying at home and lot of people have this mental health issues right before facing a virtual interview we are very nervous before facing any interview we are very nervous so the few tips that i would really really like to give you make sure you rest well before you join the session at least have a small nap let's say if you have to go for an in person interview or let's say it's at 9 a uh, it's at 10 am sleep early in the night have a good 8 hours sleep it relaxes your mind it relaxes your body it eases your mind or else let's say if it's in the evening and you're going to go you have your interview around 4 pm and you have you need one hour of traveling that means 3 o'clock you have to leave the home to be there by 4 o'clock at least 1:30 to 2:30 or 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock but have a nap 
keep yourself calm and keep yourself eased have some breathing exercise prior to the session this i recommend to all the students that i meet uh, you know in my you know career and in my you know sessions and wherever where i go for a induction sessions in the universities and wherever i go i tell them to have this breathing exercise it's very very important it eases your mind it makes you feel better and it makes you feel a bit more comfortable and confident focus it's very very important listen intently and you know if you have any doubts don't hesitate to stop there and ask let's say some people don't understand the question but they don't uh, they don't like to ask back even in person or even in virtual just say excuse um, i didn't get it or i didn't understand can you clarify it again just stop it there and just ask and just get the understanding and then respond that means you are listening that gives you a you know capacity to run keep to the point and very be brief right don't um, you know tell a don't take a history class when you are in an interview you know be very brief and you know up to the point be like that have patience you know this is not a argument or a debate table right so some interviews that i have seen people used to you know let's say even though interviewer want to check uh, certain things you know the interviewer is supposed to argue or uh, no it's just a kind of like casual nowadays like it's kind of like a casual discussion right even a technical interview or a hr interview all are like casual discussion to understand what is your skill set as well as what type of a person you are so make sure it's kind of like have it in a very brief way that would be very very good right um you know it's not like something that related to the patient point right you don't have to showcase the interviewer that you are better than the interviewer always try to get the job by showing your real personality who you are and uh, you know what you are and you can have be uh, very patient and showcase what is your skill set to them the important point right as we learned about cv whatever in the cv they want to see here visually and verbally and what you have mentioned in the cv it's really really important if you have any contradiction don't mention that in your cv if you have a knowledge gap please don't mention that in your cv and when it comes to interview don't act that you don't have that particular knowledge be transparent in what you do not know that is very very important let's say if you don't know to answer certain question you can say uh, i don't know about this but i would like to learn about it and get back to you simple it shows your learnability it shows uh, that you are willing to learn this particular skill set you are willing to learn and try this particular skill set so make sure that you do that right the fourth thing preparations to be taken before the session right this is very 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 important right and uh, i think all of you should have this and if there's anything you have i think is a very important point do a proper research about the organization and the job role nowadays i have seen so many youngsters who face the interviews and you know you know even my batchmates who face the interviews and all they don't do a proper research about the organization they don't do a proper research about the job role that they are applying to let's say they want a cloud engineer a person who's coming out from the university without knowing what is cloud they will apply for the cloud engineer right so make sure you know what you understand what is the job role and make sure that you have you know, understand what is the organization so when we know when you are when we ask what you know about virtues app or what you know about uh, ifs or cisco any other organization if you don't know about that organization then it shows that you are not ready or prepared for the interview and the other thing is you need to speak on behalf of your cv right so spend some time on you know preparing your cv like i said always have a updated cv that means you don't have to rush in the last moment right have a proper updated cv just check your you know what you have mentioned in your cv and 
what are the you know academics so technical skills or what are the other skills i mean certification you should be able to answer those skills also always have a kind of like review and prepare as well brush your basic math science and gk right so these are like a basic questions that can be asked in a interview always make sure that you have especially computer science students you should be having a logic and you should know how to you know derive a you know a code or a developing concept or those things you have to have that knowledge as well share your ideas visions and career goals it should be very clear guys what you want from the employer you should be always make sure that you mention that clearly you can't say that i i need a engineering job but i don't know what i'm going to do within next 5 years or i don't have a vision i just need a job i just need a pay don't do that always make sure have you have a idea and you know you what is your goal and what you are running towards make sure that you have that thing and you can you know have conversation about the organization think about the organization mission and vision and just you can align your conversation with that which will show the interview that you are really prepared well you know about what company is running to it because important thing in a company is their mission vision and their values right if you are aligning to that and if you are having you know developing conversation so that it gives you a good rapport right it helps you to uh, you know stand out from from other interviews right so make sure you do that and prepare well to give a brief introduction about yourself this is very 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 important don't go and say hi i'm sweda rajaratnam i'm coming from this college i'm this school and i'm currently doing this do have it a nice introduction guys like these days like a lot of people having a very catchy introduction about their self and what is they're passionate about so let's say if you are a computer science student you have so much of things to talk about right so have a very brief and a nice introduction about yourself that itself give a very good impression to the interviewer oh this person has a spark this person has something you know we can get from it and the final point you know be ready for some questions and be be more you know keen and be more collaborative just um, be prepared with some questions so when you Uh, you know have this question it shows that you have the potential to you know do all those uh, you know you, you have the potential to face the interview as well as you are well prepared to the interview facing session the final thing and final tip before i wind up the session and before we move into the qa and uh, session i would like to give you tips that just learn about what are the new things happening around the industry now even the cvs or even in the interview what type of virtual interviews are happening how they are writing the codes how they are you know facing the interviews there are so many demos are in the youtube and there are so many questions you know uh, i think linkedin is one of the good platform for you to use that even you can speak to me and you can send me message and ask me okay sweda how can i improve my cv you can send us your cv we can check your cv you can ask uh, you know i would like to know more about this let's do another session something like that just be more interactive and more engaged with the industry where you will understand what is the current market so don't be uh, the final thought don't be a bookworm uh, just be more interactive and understand what's the market and my final point is aim high stand tall and always you will get spotted so always go for big uh, go for big and you can stand tall and then you will get spotted anywhere you want right so let's move to the q uh, questions uh, any questions there any we have one question ma'am i have seen colored cv templates as well as plain black and cv plain black black and white cv which one would give the best impression so basically uh, i think it's mulchi right mulchi so mulchi when it comes to uh, this particular uh, question 
what I would say is uh, I personally prefer two colored CVs, not like very colorful and you know clumsy CVs. I don't recommend because always make sure that you have only two colors, maybe white and blue, white and black, and kind of like a light colored themes. CVs are very good and it gives you a good impression because uh, basically uh, according to our psychological mindset when you have too much of colors more than the input you go and check the you know the colorful figures right so that's why we have presentation slides why we make the presentation slides a bit colorful to attract people but in your cv i would always recommend have two color templates i think in google you can see a lot of color templates make sure that you have two color templates where you have uh, uh, blue and white or maybe black and white or maybe any other pale color in that color group that would be recommended i hope i answered your question malchi that's great so one more thing um i wanted to uh, you know emphasize here uh, when you put a picture in your cv do you think it's uh, you know compulsory or do you think it's not compulsory when you want to upload a your, in your cv do you think you have to put a picture or you don't have to put a picture you can drop a message guys yes or no anything is fine okay uh, malchi is thinking is it compulsory is it okay guys it's not compulsory it's not 100% compulsory that you have to put a picture in your cv but the important thing is if you are putting a picture it has to be professional don't put a picture where you stand next to a tree or you stand next to a kind of like a how do you call it? somewhere you know some professional photographer took a picture cut that picture and put those pictures don't put those pictures always make sure that you have a white background and you have a professional picture updated in your you know, scene that is really 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 important any other questions or any other clarification that you need then i can open the floor to you know ask guys feel uh, feel free to ask any questions so this is a forum to ask your questions and you can clarify that doubts it can be any language there's no issues tamil singhala any language is fine madam we are receiving lot of questions from the slido platform uh, we will discuss from them in a the q and a session yes we can uh can you present the questions uh, demini so then we can start the q and a yeah madam now it's the time for your questions you can give your feedback on today's session while the q and a session is ongoing use the link right in the chat box to send us some feedback so miss veda shall we move on these questions our first question is um Usually, interviewers ask questions to trick us. What are the methods or strategies that we should follow to answer those questions? Okay. So basically, uh, what are the strategies that we have to uh, follow to answer some technical questions? Is it? Yeah. Okay. So basically, like I said, guys, when it comes to technical questions. um important two things that you're going to follow is about your cv first right you should mention what are the skill set that you clearly know let's say if you are a person you are strong in java wp or php mention that properly mention that clearly so then the interview knows okay we are going to ask the question from java right then listen to the question properly and if you have any uh, doubt so clarification stop there and ask and then answer the question if you don't know to answer particular coding or particular 
theoretical question you know what are the four types of uh, you know double ops that you know or if there is any question that he ask if you can if you don't know that particular area you can always say uh, this particular area i don't know maybe uh, i can research about it maybe when you if you give me a chance i'll learn from your organization those type of a positive answers and positive attitude will be encouraged by the interviewer that i have seen in many interviews actually uh demi i can't hear you i think you're on mute sorry for the inconvenience no problem um, our next question is every job has general market value so when a beginner tries to enter the field and when it comes to salary expectation would it be good idea to ask about salary in the process of interviewing um actually that's a good question though because uh yeah some people says don't discuss about the salary because it's going to be a beginner you're going to face first interview if you talk about salary people will be thinking your you know money oriented and all those uh, conceptions are there that is true but what i would say is you don't have to demand for a salary in your uh, interview but you can ask about it right so what is your you know companies uh, market say or maybe what i will what can i expect from the company or if you have expectation you can freely discuss about it you don't have to uh, you know i then worry about uh, you know interviewers going to think something bad when i talk about salary uh, i don't think so that conception or that concept is here right now you can always uh, you know you know you don't have to demand say like you know uh, you know sweda give me 100000 then only i will join you can't do that right but you can ask okay sweda what would be the range or what do you think um, it's a good range that i can ask for so when you put that the interviewer will be more interested to you know negotiate and it starts the negotiation right you have to improve your negotiation skill so that is very important i think uh, it can be a good discussion but make sure that you don't demand or you show yourself as like no you have to give me this amount otherwise i won't join the company because that will uh, even though we have the amount to give you we will be thinking oh is that the character that we are going to include in our team so make sure that you negotiate in a really good way and uh, that would be a good encourageable conversation i think okay thank you miss veda and next moving to uh, next question uh, actually this is the question that i want to do i want to ask from you uh, there are so many qualified and talented people in the industry would i still mm -hmm. stand a chance to pass an interview even though i am not the most qualified person out there it's like this currently you know if you think about currently sri lankan market there are so many qualified people and non qualified people skilled unskilled you know those concept is wrong right now right everyone is capable in some sort of things right maybe i'm not a good uh, i am very bad when it comes to accounts i can't uh, mathematical side i'm very weak i can't you know even uh, you know do a statement i can't i can't do a budget <laughs> for example i'm say right but, but i'm actually weak in accounts i can't do accounts but i'm good in you know the current job that i'm doing right i'm good in my hr or oh, i'm good in my uh, you know my negotiation skill i'm good in my speaking so you will be having one skill that will highlight who you are right so that skill you have to identify there is no one saying that i don't stand a chance in the market you have a chance in the market because before that if you think about the past um, thing there many it's going to be either engineer doctor or a teacher or a accountant right but now see the current market you have so many opportunities even engineering students have different different technology right you don't have to be a, a engineer when you studying engineering right you can start you can be a freelancer you don't have to work in a company you can do a freelancing you can teach you can lecture you can do so many things 
so i don't believe in that no one is qualified and you know qualified and non qualified and all you have some sort of potential in you you have to find it out by yourself when you find out that right path maybe you can be a moderator in your in some television or maybe somewhere right so you don't have to be a, i i wish you to study and get your engineering done but it's, it doesn't have to be that right it can be always a it, it can be always your passion and your uh, keen to figure out what you can do and what you will be best let's say for example if my mama has asked me to put, go to sima i don't think so then you will be talking to me like this right i would have been in a you know i'll be the most dumpest uh, accountant ever ca- a company can get but it always you have to take a time and figure out what you are good at and once you figure out that then you can definitely you will be the biggest qualified person in your field i hope i answered your question there i mean yeah thank you that clear clarification madam and next move into our next question uh when we write a resume we always try to include a lot of details on the our experience and our talents so eventually if our resume become longer than a page is it going to be a problem um it's a very good question actually i also wanted to emphasize that um basically uh, let's say we all are beginners now right we are like uh, done we are going to start our degree first year or second year i will always say limit your cv to one to two pages that is more than enough because if you have so much of details in your cv it's not going to be uh, attractive or it's not going to you know catch the attention always give the important details in your cv because your cv reflects who you are right so you can't always put let's say uh, since you have done so much of sports you can't put grade 1 i collected seeds i got first place or oh, in grade 2 i you know i went sack race and i won second place you can't put that right so always make sure you give the right information and you know stick to one to two pages that is very very important i think that would be ideal when you go to the next level let's say if you are doing a masters or phd and you are a doctorate then your cv will be eventually the pages will be increased so currently i would recommend you guys to stick to one to two pages thank you madam uh, then someone ask after creating a killer resume then our next step is face the interview with the highest level level of confidence but it is the nervous thing to do so how can we answer the questions confidently okay it actually eventually should come from us right uh, so there is no formula to be become confident right always what i will be saying is i showed you four steps right to prepare yourself if you are really prepared that will give you automatically confidence trust me i uh, i wasn't able to speak in a stage uh for like half like even though after i'm schooling uh, i wasn't able to speak in front of crowd because i always think i will be you know blabber or i will stop you know my confidence level was so low but what i did was i did practice you know i practiced myself to go and talk in front of 1000 people so 100 people so nowadays i'm talking you know uh, you know when you when i go to the universities i have to talk to 100 and 1000 people how i got that confidence through practice you know practice makes a man perfect right so always make sure before your interview have kind of like a practice you know just see uh, just go in front of your mirror then that's the best teacher right if you go in front of your mirror you can see who you are and uh, basically you can uh, have a practice like introduction about yourself and you first you have to believe in yourself that you are this software engineer you're going to face the interview in purchase or any other company so i'm going to face the interview i know this particular technical skills i have this uh, potential so i'm going to face the interview build that attitude that will definitely help you to face the interview confidently and you know first two interviews definitely you will be nervous but the 
you know with experience you will be more confident so now now don't worry about it you know don't think about anything nervous just like you said have a killer cv and go for the kill in the interviews that's what i would recommend to add that question madam uh, everyone is not very confident in their english speaking will it be problem no actually it's it's like this guys uh, currently english is a global language everyone should know but it doesn't penalize you to go for a job right unless and otherwise you are a news reader in a you know bbc or a some other english channel if you go to a corporate now we are bilingual right so people with a uh, different language we would recommend so even especially when you think about my company uh, let's say if you're a bit uncomfortable in english don't worry we'll take you in and we'll train you that's why as a corporate we are so now most of the companies are having that practice but it's very very important for you to have the global language as well because currently if you see anywhere you go everything is in english right nothing it's it helps you so i wouldn't say you know don't worry uh, if you have if you only know singular or tamil you will get a job what i'm saying is you don't have to feel inferior if you are fit uh, you know i uh, when i started my job i'm very bad in singular i can't talk in singular i can read and write but still i will struggle when i speak in singular but it didn't make any difference or it didn't change anything but now i i can you know even at least i can tell a route when i get into a to in singular so improve yourself learn you know english improve your speaking skills you know you can see lot of videos in youtube now to develop your speaking skill but you don't have to feel inferior or you don't have to feel like okay i don't know how to convey my message in english because of that i can't face an interview don't do that phase an interview practice yourself definitely it will help you okay moving to next question if you want to clarify something at the interview is it okay to ask them and what kind of questions that we should avoid asking hmm that's an interesting question i think if you have any doubts so if you want to interrupt them yes you can ask like you can pause and ask okay ma'am i didn't understand that uh, can you repeat it again right it's not a fault at all but what type of a question that you shouldn't ask i don't think so is there anything that you shouldn't ask it's always uh, it depends on who is the interviewer and uh, what type of interview you are facing right you shouldn't be very personal that's a very important thing you can't go and ask about i saw you in facebook what is your surname ma'am is this your facebook profile or instagram profile are you currently employed in this company or are you cousin of this person don't those type of questions you shouldn't be asking but other than that anything related to the interview or the job you can always ask uh, frankly you can um, in all the interviewers expect that be transparent if you don't know something let's say for example i'm asking from devmini what is the uh, new technology that you learned so if devmini doesn't have any knowledge about that particular technology she can ask from me ma'am i don't know about this particular technology where can i refer or oh, what how can i learn about it or oh, what is this technology can you tell me about it those type of questions are always welcome so i think rather going to personal or other than being personal or very uh, political or religious you can any you can ask anything related to the interview there is nothing call you shouldn't ask i think i clearly answered that question or do you need more clarification on that no uh there is question about uh, extra curricular activities uh, okay. is it necessary to did extra curricular activities for uh, to add cvo phase uh... mm. 
Well, like I said, uh, let's say if you haven't done any extracurricular activities, that's okay. Maybe you are an academically strong person. Oh, you, I, I don't think so. Any of the students currently uh, are like that. They do something, right? Either you in a some club or association or something. So those also a good management uh, skill. So I would recommend you to put the extracurricular activities. If you don't have, I think this is your first year of your college, right? Start doing extracurricular activities. It will help you to, you know, maybe you can join the computer science student association as well. If you are not a part of it, just join and understand how association works or you know, do a sports. You don't have to be a star in a sport, but if you join a sport you will understand how that rhythm works right how a team works how you're gonna individually contribute to a association or a club or a sport that uh, enhance your skill your you know a lot of things so i would definitely i'm 100 percent with an extracurricular person who can you know include in their cv but if you don't have it's okay it's all right but i would 100 percent recommend for you to add it in the cv though Okay, thank you, madam. The final question from the questions we received. Uh, we always want to showcase our talents on our resume. Volunteering is something that I love to do. So is it worth the resume space? I think it is worth the resume space because it's about who you are, right? Like I said, extracurricular activities, achievements and everything about your personal personality, right? What type of a person you are. Even in volunteering, you're not going to, you have to join a club to do a volunteer, right? UNICEF or UNICEF or maybe road track or any club. In that club, you will work under some leader, right? So you're going to learn about a management skill. I think you shouldn't think this is worthy or this is not worthy. I think you should definitely put it. And uh, it, it's a good thing to add in your CV. Oh, dear me. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Uh, okay, great. Okay. Uh, I would really, really like to thank, uh, you know, dear Mini and the uh, computer science students uh, association of your university of Kalania and Balindu who reached out to me uh, to all of you I really enjoyed this session and the questions were very interesting I would really love to see them asking you know you know in a live session that would be really nice hope to see you all in another you know in-person session where I can meet all of you and thanks a lot uh, you know share your feedbacks you can reach out to me through LinkedIn and send your feedback through LinkedIn also. If you have any comments, you can recommend me as well. Uh, and any other things, if you have, please do reach out to me. I wish you all a good luck and all the best for your career and whatever that you want to achieve in your future. And be uh, stay safe and have a healthy and a good year ahead. Thank you, team. Ms. Sweda gave very clear clarification on the questions, and I hope you all got your questions clear. Also, it was very productive and informative session. I'm sure you all will agree with me. So, Mrs. Ms. Sweda, we are very grateful to you for all your effort and for asking your time and uh, taking your time out of your schedule and conducting this webinar today. So, Ms. Sweda, thank you very much and please accept this digital talk and appreciation on behalf of CSSA. Thank you so much, team. It's very really nice. Thank you so much. And finally, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our lecturers, organizing committee, and the executive board. We appreciate all of you for all the support you gave us. Also, on behalf of CSSA, I would like to thank everyone who participated in today's webinar for your active participation. Now, we have reached the end of today's event. I hope you enjoy it and learn something new. Thank you for joining us today. Good night and stay safe.